Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig uh, tutorial. And in this one, we need to talk about how we can slice to a drum machine, which is something very simple that maybe you already know, because this is something, you know, kind of a basic, but it's important. It's important because this is going to um, make you save some time. And whenever you make tracks, time is of the essence, right? Uh, saving time is just as important as making the actual track. And uh, okay, so I'm gonna show you how what we have right here. I'm gonna go and show the clip. It's just a very dumb kick and siren hat. That's it. Very simple. Okay. So what I want to do, since I like the kick and the hat and everything else, I want to chop this to a drum machine so I can create a different beat because maybe I don't like this one. So you have a, you know, a few choices. I'm going to go right here and say, go and go to slice to drum machine. So, okay. So I'm going to go right here and we have the first problem. Bounce and slice and then slice to raw. What's the difference? So, okay. So. If I go right here and play the clip, sounds cool, right? Now, the default uh, uh, BPM of this clip is 100 BPMs. And right here, I'm going to 100. So it's gonna sound cool. Now, if I go down, this clip will start breaking. But notice that nothing's changing right here. So I'm gonna go and do some playing. All right. So it sounds like crap because behind the scenes, when we import as a clip on Bitwig or, you know, Ableton or any DAW is going to stretch the clip so it can match the BPM of your project and it's going to do it for you. This is not, you know, automatically. Now, of course, you can disable this behavior. If you select the clip, notice that it says audio event and then mode. And by default, it's going to be stretch. So it's stretching the clip to match the BPM of your project. You have different ways of stretching, but I'm not going to talk about this. Maybe I'm going to do a different video because this is very useful. So you have a raw, which is means unstretched. So this means that it doesn't matter the BPM. If I go down, the clip will not change. I'm going to go and do play. And it is, this sounds the same because it's not, and it's not following the, the uh, tempo. If I low, go lower and do and do, and do that, notice it's very different. It's not following the tempo. So this is going to be raw. So, okay, so what this has to do with anything we've been talking. So when we go to the drum machine, notice we get the bounce and slice. So bounce is going to be bouncing whatever you have right here, stretched or not stretched. And then it's going to slice it to a drum machine. It's going to break every, every different part and put it on a drum machine. So in this case, since I want to preserve the original sound, I don't want to stretch it to break it. I'm going to be using the raw, right? Makes sense. I'm going to use the raw uh, clip. So then we have the next problem is slice at. And this one, notice that we have very, you know, just different options. Now, the important part right here is going to be this one. This will create blah, blah, blah slice. Okay. So. If you go to Beatmaker, this one, I'm not going to talk about, talk about this one, but it's just one slice. Then if we go to Onsets, it's 28 slices. And then if we go to the other one, it's one slice. If you go to Bars, we have four slices because this one lasts four bars. One, two, three, four right here at the top. So yeah, that's the difference with this one. This one will break it into 64. This one, 16, and you know, on and on and on. So what this will do, if I leave it a default, uh, let's say I go and do on sets. I'm going to go and say this will create 28 slices. Okay, I'm going to go, okay. And this will go and create a drum machine. Notice the progression right here is going to give us pretty much everything. And if I play this, I'm going to mute this and I play this. Of course, I need to do the correct tempo. I'm going to go and play it. Notice we get the same sound, it's the same clip, but we are playing this with MIDI. That's the whole point, right? So, okay. So the trick right here is that this one behind the scenes, it's uh, going and analyzing the clip and it's uh, kind of uh, selecting the different breakpoints for us. That's why we get 28, right? Notice that this is just crazy. We get a lot. And this one, for example, is the kick. And this one, it's kind of the same kick, right? So now what we need to do, we need to go and start, you know, listening for everything. This is going to be the kick. This is going to be something else right here. This is a duplicated. So I'm going to go and delete it. So we need to do all this work. Now, this is a very bad workflow. 
because you're gonna spend a lot of time just analyzing all the beats right here and everything that you have and uh, removing what you don't want. And again, time is of the essence. You cannot spend, you know, that amount of time just deleting clips, just crazy. So we have a better way uh, of doing things. So I'm gonna go and do delete and there, there's no magical answer. You just still need to go and do the work. So when you, you, whenever you import the clip, Bitwick or whatever, you know, whatever DAW is going to analyze your truck. And notice that you get this blue breakpoints right here. These ones are called onsets. So what it does behind the scenes is going to say, okay, so this is the clip. This is the first one. And right here, I have a transient, you know, that this peak that we have right here. So it will assume that this is a different thing, a different instrument or, you know, maybe a same, uh, the, same in, the same sound as this one, but still sound. So it's going to create a breakpoint right here, an onset. Then it's not detecting it right here, so it's not doing anything. Then it's going to the next one, and this one is the snare, and it's not detecting, and then it goes right here, detects this one, and then again, and again, and again. It's going to go and create a breakpoint on every transient that it can recognize. That's what it does. Now, and that's why we get a million, or in this case, 28 different pieces. Now, the problem is that all the, most of the pieces are just the same. That's the problem. We get the kick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, 10, 11, 12, and uh, 13 times. So that just, you know, it's not a good workflow. So what we can do in this case, I'm gonna go, a kaboom, I'm gonna delete the, all the onsets because we can go and do this manually. This is the kick. And I know it's the kick, and this one is a hat, so I'm going to go and create the onsets. So if I do, a, uh, you know, I convert this to, to a drum machine, it's going to break it in two, and this one, and then the rest. So this one is a different sound. I'm going to go and select it. This one is the I know this this one is the uh, uh, the clap or the snare. This one is kind of a hat, and this one it's maybe a different thing. And right here, notice it. We start over. So I'm going to go and create a breakpoint right here because because it's going to be this 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 and then the rest of the track so now the trick is i'm gonna go there and i'm gonna go to slice to drum machine and now we get just uh, seven slices i'm gonna go and slice it and now it's you know something a bit more usable right here we get the kick then we get that hat we get the tiny element then we have the snare then we have this and then we have this and this one is going to be everything else so i don't need this one because I've already already have all the different elements right here. So now I don't even need to use this one. I can easily go right here, create a clip and say, okay, so this is gonna be my kick. I'm gonna go do something like that. This is gonna be the hat. So I'm gonna go create a hat there, pretty simple. Now, you know, I'm not going crazy. So this one, we could do something like that. Maybe there and there. This one is gonna be, the, the clap, so I'm gonna go and add the clap right there. This one, maybe I'm not gonna use it. I like this one. And I'm gonna go just, uh, you know, adjust this and I'm gonna go and play it. I'm gonna go do play and we get a completely different sound. And this took us two minutes. There's no need to start deleting all the crap right here. So this doesn't mean that you still, you know, you're not going to do the work. You still need to go right here and adjust all the envelopes and everything else. Uh, for example, maybe this one sounds very short. So I'm going to go and make it, you know, much larger. You still need to do this. There's no, no, you know, there's no magic, magical uh, solution. Now, the other thing that you need to uh, take into account is that what happens if you have a sound right here that it's not at the beginning, that you're not chopping with the onsets. You're going to need to, you know, again, do the work. Go right here, do the onset. I'm going to go to onsets and do the onset and just, you know, kind of a split that uh, part of the clip so you can get it as a slice. So again, this is just a much better workflow than going and letting the default uh, on set uh, to create a drum machine. Maybe you didn't know this and this is going to help you to go faster because this this one, you know, doing this, what, took us a minute, a minute and a half, maybe less, two minutes, let's say. This is just much, much better workflow. Okay, so that's it. So if you really like the video, if you learned something, remember to do subscribe and remember to like the uh, like the video. All right. Now remember, of course, everything I upload right here is going to be first on Patreon, maybe days, weeks, or months. 
uh, before it gets released to YouTube. So make sure you check Patreon and of course, help the channel. Okay, so uh, see you on the next one.